Hey coders, and welcome to episode four of our App Engine playlist on the Google Cloud Platform course. Now in this episode, we're going to be investigating the concept of microservices, both conceptually via slides, as well as through a live demonstration. Whenever you build out an application, you're going to realize very quickly that the amount of code and files and dependencies and everything else needed to build that application is going to grow very large. So you need a way of organizing all of that stuff so to make your application work. Now the process of organizing all of your code in your application is also known as an application architecture. And the two most common and popular application architectures are what's known as monolith and microservices. So let's first review what Monolith is. So Monolith is what you would imagine your application to be structured like. You have your front end code, and this is basically your website or whatever interface you are presenting to your users. And then that will communicate with your business logic, which is stored on your servers. So this code, which is also known as backend code, will handle things such as authentication and billing and inventory and shipping and maybe a whole lot more business logic. Now the thing is all of this business logic, all of this backend code is stored within the same code base and stored within the same container. So you have dependencies say or packages or libraries for authentication being shared with the uh, backend logic and the business logic for billing. And the same for billing with inventory. So basically you just throw everything into this one large container with one large code base and everything sits on that code base, on that container. Now this, uh, now this backend code can communicate with its own database. So that is basically what a monolith architecture is. But microservices is an incredibly popular trend and I wouldn't even call it a trend anymore because it has its own uh, it has its own space now within the application architectures. A lot of big companies are using it, tech companies such as Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, all of these people, all of these companies have moved now from a monolith architecture over to a microservices architecture. So what's the difference? Well, the front end code is still there, but now with the back end code, instead of throwing all of the authentication logic in the same space as the billing and the inventory, we are actually going to create our own separate mini applications that do nothing else except for what, what they are intended for. So let's say for authentication. With microservices, we're going to create our own little mini application dedicated solely to our own application's authentication process. It's going to include nothing else except for authentication. And we can do this with other, with other services such as billing or inventory or shipping. And we, we basically just have a bunch of little mini applications running to service our, our larger main application. Now the cool thing is, is because all of these are their own mini application, they can have their own database and they can communicate with each other as well. So that is incredibly helpful. Now, why would we have a microservices architecture versus a monolith? Well, microservices is incredibly useful and popular if you have a large application. And let's say you also have a lot of human resources. So you could basically break up your teams of human resources to specialize in specific microservices. So let's say you have a group of people who are really good at authentication. They could all specialize in the authentication app of your main application. And the cool thing is too, because they're all, they're all their own separate apps, you can scale them independently of each other, you can introduce new technologies, uh, and, and none of them are going to be conflicting with each other, because again, they're all their own application. Now Monolith is good if you have, say, a smaller application, if you want to scale really quickly, if you want to have all your code just in one space, if you, if you want to, say, uh, deploy quickly or develop quickly, that is what a monolith application would be for. And again, monolith ar applications aren't inherently bad. They are proven and a lot of people do them. It's just that I would use them more for smaller applications, whereas microservices would be for a larger application and a large company. So this is how a, a app engine application is structured. And this is straight from the Google Cloud website. You have your application, which is hovering over everything, basically. 
And when you first push something to your app engine application, some code, you get what's known as a default service. So automatically you are now a monolith service. But if you wanted to structure your application in a more microservices architecture, you can actually add more services to that. And you can have multiple services underneath your main application. Now the cool thing about these services is they are, you can think of them as their own mini application, which means they can have their own separate runtime. And that's actually what we're going to do in the live demonstration. You'll see that we have one service that is a Node.js runtime, but then we're going to introduce a different service that is that is a, a Python runtime. So you have one that's Node.js, one that is Python, and yet they are working together to service the main uh, application at large. Now we know this already, but each service has can have their own versions, and then each version can have zero to hundreds of instances running to keep that version available to the public. So the top topic for today is simply microservices. So without any further ado, let's uh, dive on over to the code and have a look at microservices in action. So far in this playlist, we have developed a application of the monolithic architecture. And the way to verify that is simply by clicking on this services tab in the sidebar menu. And then once we do, yep, we can verify that we only have one service, that's the default service. And apparently we have 16 deployed versions to this service. So let's go and check out the most current version. All right, so this is the web application, the website, which we have been working on over the past couple of episodes. This should all look familiar, except for maybe this one modification down here, which is a contact button. If we click on that, then we should be redirected to this user interface. And the, and the way that this page works basically is like a contact form. So right now we have it so that the user can input their Instagram username and password and also a message. And then what will happen was, is that behind the scenes it will connect to their Instagram account and then whatever message they write in here, it will send that message on behalf of their Instagram account to my Instagram account and it'll be a direct message and I'll be able to see it on my own Instagram account once they hit this button right here. So let's say that we think that this business logic and connecting to all the Instagram APIs and all of the functions on the APIs, let's say that we think that deserves its own service, right? We're trying to make a microservices architecture and we believe that Again, everything happening with Instagram's API and everything like that, that that deserves its own container and its own uh, microservice. So how can we make that logic into a microservice? Well, we need to go to our code editor and I have written out some Python files that will connect to Instagram's API and then also do some other things. But again, these are Python files, and right now we have a Node.js runtime, right? Our current uh, service, our current application runs on a Node.js runtime, and you can't run Python files from a Node.js runtime, right? So we are going to need to create our own, or a new runtime, a new service. So first things first, let's create a new folder. And you can name this folder whatever you'd like. I'm just going to say David Weiss Programming. And then I'll say Instagram Python. All right, that's a pretty long name. But then after that, you will need to open a new window in VS Code, which I'll do right now. And because again, this is not really a Python tutorial or a Flask tutorial, I'm going to be creating a Flask app application. But since this, this tutorial is focusing on microservices, I'm just going to basically speed code uh, this part. So first we're gonna drag in that folder and then we are going to create a new terminal. We are going to drag in some of these other Python files which I have written. All right, so this is the Instagram API right here. Here is our main.py. This will act as our server-side code for our Flask app application. And then also I'm going to drag in a requirements.txt file. All right, so 
First things first, I am going to activate a virtual environment. Or first I need to create one. I'll say Python 3 M Venv Venv. And what that will do is it'll just create a virtual environment for me. And then I'm going to activate it by saying venv slash bin slash activate. All right, so there we go. So now we have an activated virtual environment. I'm just going to install a few things. Let's say first flask, oops, pip3 install flask, pip3 install requests, and then finally, pip3 install flask course. Oops, I think I need to do this right here. Pip3 install flask course. All right, so there we go. We have everything installed now. So let's just test to see if this works, right? So what I'm going to do is go to this main file, right? See, it says if name equals main, then we're going to run the app. So let's try that right now. We'll say Python 3, and then we'll say main.py. All right, so it's now going to be running on this local server. Let's go and check that out. All right, so again, it is working. That is just basically our test route right here just to see if it is working. So we now see that it is working and we think that this post request to this endpoint right here will also work. So we're just going to shut down that local server, uh, that local server and then deploy this to the uh, Google Cloud. But again, if you remember, in order to deploy a application to App Engine, you need an app.yaml file. So let's go and create that right now. We'll say app.yaml. All right, again, like the Node.js application, we need to specify a runtime. Again, this was a Node.js uh, version 10 runtime, but now we are running Python, so we're going to say runtime Python, and then we're gonna use version 3.7. Great, so we could deploy it just like this, but what the, this will deploy to is it'll deploy to the default service. And that is what we don't want. We don't want to overwrite our default service right now. So to specify that we are making a new service, all we need to do is just add one line of code to this app.yaml file. Again, we're going to say service, and then we can name it whatever we would like to, as long as it is 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 compatible with the regular expressions all right so it says instagram we'll name it instagram service how about that all right so that's all we need to do to override the default service is just specify our own service and we're going to name it instagram service all right now i believe we have everything so let's now try and deploy this to the google cloud we'll say g cloud app deploy use that uh, function that we always like. And if you notice here, it says target service now is Instagram service. So usually this will say default, but since now we are deploying to a new service, this is going to say Instagram service, exactly what we specified right here. Also, you can see that we have a new target URL. It has prepended the string Instagram-service- dot to our normal uh, URL address. So that is just something to keep in mind as well. So now I'm going to say yes. And it's going to be uploading now to Google Cloud, so I'll speed this up. All right, so it has just deployed now to this service right here, Instagram service at this URL right here. And again, I want to emphasize the only difference between these two files right here is just one line of code, I guess two lines of code, but this, our Node.js application says runtime Node.js 10, right? That's our that's our Node.js runtime. And then in our Python, in our Flask application, all we're doing is specifying a new runtime and just adding this one line of code, which specifies now the service, and you can add as many services as you want. You can have as many different uh, folders containing your code for the different microservices but this is all that you need to deploy to a new service. All right, now let's go and check to see if it worked. So we'll go back into our, into our application right here, and I'm going to now refresh this page, 
And I'm actually now going to get out my Instagram on my mobile device. And I should be deploying it, or I should be, uh, I should be screencasting it right now. Here we go. All right, so we're going to see now if we get a notification from uh, whoever from this username right here. So we'll say David the Weiss, and I'll type in my password, and I'll type in my message. Hello from David Weiss Programming com. All right, so if I click on this button, we should get in. We should get notification on this Instagram. And again, this is real time. As you can see, the time is six twenty or six. Yeah, six twenty six p.m. Also on the phone, it says six twenty six. All right, now let's see if this works. I'm gonna hit this button. And it says your message has been sent and there we go. Look at that. I just got a notification on my Instagram. Let's go check it out. There it is right there. Hello from DavidWeissProgramming.com. So I think that is pretty flippin' cool. And that is all because of microservices, or that is an example of microservices in action. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And, and one more thing too, also I just wanna verify, look, see it says Instagram service, now we have two services deployed, and if we go into our dashboard, again, we can specify by, or we can filter by service now. All right guys, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I had a lot of fun making this episode, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Also, don't feel, uh, or feel free to uh, donate to the Patreon page. There's a lot of exclusive perks there as well. Um, and so I guess I'll see you in the very next episode.